Hey, it's Bridget. I'm arriving. <laughs> Hi. Hey, I'm trying to use my front facing camera. So let's do this right. Oh, I gotta check my hair here. Okay, it's not bad. Not bad at all, a little bit crazy. Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. We're gonna hang out here in my new chair in the greenhouse room that I work in. So welcome. It's a little bit of a gloomy day here. It's definitely an autumn slash touching winter a little bit here in Minnesota, which is where I live. And so it is overcast, which is actually helping us today to film in the greenhouse. So it's nice to see you. I have a really serious topic I want to talk to you about. This is a tough one. And when I am filming this, actually, I'm not sure I think I'm gonna to talk to Robin Williams about it, is what I think. And not because he necessarily suffered with it or struggled with it himself, but because I think he's a really wise soul in the afterlife and can give us some, oh, I feel so like, ugh, wobbly, okay. I think he can give us some insight on this topic and I know it affects many of you. So we're gonna talk about addiction today. And we're gonna talk about it specifically related to alcoholism. I have the opportunity to support someone that I care a lot about who is wrestling with this issue. And so I reached out and got some big gun support spiritually and also then metaphysically, Archangel Michael for sure. And I also reached out to some human support for myself to educate myself about alcoholism. Like, what is it like, like for people who need to drink or who use alcohol as a numbing uh, tool? Like, what is this like? Because I, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't have that experience myself. So I reached out and got a little educated from someone who I also care deeply about, who I really appreciate, and she knows who she is who's been on the path, walked the path herself, and is also now a healer, and also educates people on the effects of alcohol on your body. And so the fact that it's a medical issue, for example, and how it affects the brain as well. So this is where I'm coming from today, very real. And you know that if you watch me on Fairy Grasshopper, my YouTube channel, that I do talk about my personal stuff, and of course, my work on Above Life channel, that real human life is what is the ins inspiration for our conversations with the afterlife. So I hope that this, this conversation with Robin Williams about addiction, specifically alcohol use, maybe can give us some insights. If you yourself are struggling or wondering if maybe you have an issue or a problem with it, or if you are someone like me who really love someone who is battling this within themselves, how to kind of handle that. So we're gonna have a conversation with Robin about that. Okay, so let's let's talk, all right. Okay, so I see him here and then he pops over here. I actually kind of feel two energies I'm just gonna share. I think I'm supposed to channel David Bowie also at some point because I feel him and I feel, I feel Robin. So let's talk with Robin Williams first. Let's see. He looks like Mrs. Doubtfire, Oh, you know, like where he puts his face into the cream pie in the fridge and sticks it back out and is like, oh, like pretends like he has the cold cream on because he didn't have his, you know, his costume on, his, his makeup on and stuff. So um, I've seen him like that before. So what's that about? He says, ah, desperation. When you talk about addiction, that's where you start with desperation. People are desperate. And in the times that you are living in now, he says, that's everywhere. It's like desperation itself, that is desperate energy is a disease. That's what the real problem is, is this desperate, kind of frantic. He's like frantic, desperate energy, which is really a combination of anxiety and fear. Desperation is a combination of anxiety and fear. Um, there's an impulsivity piece to it, an action, action, action. And he says like um, being really busy, 
doing a lot of things so that you don't have to think about the addiction, whatever your addiction is. And he's broadening it out and just saying the addiction in general. And so you don't think about it. But he says, but as sooner or later you crash because you have to stop. You get too tired of doing so many things or you get too stressed out by all the actions that you get sick, like a headache or, or, or um, you know, physical ailments, bodies run down. So then you get colds and flus and all that kind of stuff. It really affects you. He says, sooner or later you crash. And he says, like with your friend who uses alcohol, it's the anticipation of avoiding a crash. So you take in the substance so that you have a buffer around you so that you don't feel so intensely the crashes. Like there's really no crash. There is a crash, but it's a constant state of, of pain but it's not felt until you come out of it. When you come out of it, it's like being in a coma. He's kind of saying like being in a coma, you come out of it and you're like, whoa, what happened? And all of a sudden like five years of your life is gone, that kind of thing. He says, he says yes, he means to be dramatic, by the way. So desperation. So desperation, a form of desperation like despair is feeling sad or feeling so, can you talk to us about feelings besides the anxiety and the fear piece that um, creates what the desperation is about. It's a loss of oneself, he says. That's what the need is for them, the other substance, to manage the emotional um, disconnect or to temper the emotional sabotage that's occurring. He says it's really a sabotage. It's really an emotional sabotaging. It's in a way, he says, it's like this internal um, misuse of the mind the mind misusing the emotions to sabotage the and an attempt to control the outcome is what Robin's saying. So I'm getting information from Robin Williams in two different ways right now. It's kind of interesting because I'm getting it infused like a crown chakra divine wisdom kind of thing. And I'm also feeling this as in like a matter of fact kind of feeling way, but feeling like sensory, uh, like um, not emotional, but like like a huge chunk of file box filled with information that we're unpacking. That's how it's coming through. Okay, to clarify. Emotionally sabotaging. So the mind is using the emotions to sabotage what? The pursuit of dreams and desires. So addiction is a form of keeping us safe like in a comfort zone so that we don't stick our necks out there so that we don't get hurt so that we don't achieve our dreams and desires so it's like sabotaging your own dreams and desires he says absolutely if you're not high functioning and and have all your faculties have all access to all of the information inside of you to use it in ways that are appropriate and directed for your purpose he says it's going to just create chaos inside People who are ultra creative, he says, really, you see this with musicians, he says, and, and artists. They get lost in their own thoughts. They get lost in their own, in, inside themselves, their own internal chaos. And alcohol or uh, using other substances is a way to quiet that down or, or to the perception of quieting down the noise. But the truth is, is what it creates is isolation and loneliness. So addiction, substances, substance use and subsequent abuse is about quieting the noise, but that actually does create a loneliness and isolation, which in many cases is what you're trying to get away from in the first place is a bad relationships, bad jobs, bad choices, a series of choices that have been made that created landscape around you, a life that you wake up and decide one day that you're not happy or you discover through, through maybe, I don't know, a psychic awakening or maybe a life altering experience or maybe just some contemplation, maybe some inner work, some journaling, some things that you've been doing yourself, some, some new discoveries about yourself that have created this, this realization. And it's like, what do you do with that? That's a lot of information. And he says, it is, but that's life. Like that's life, <laughs> that, that's living life. He says, that's living life. And do you want the information? He says, the human brain wants the information. It craves the information. 
It's the implementation piece, the follow through, the follow up. That's where everybody falls flat on their faces, he says, and the follow up, the follow through, the implementation. It's so much easier to, to refocus and serve other people's needs because if their needs aren't met, then you can't blame yourself because you tried. It's their problem for the needs or not articulating the needs. When it's your own needs and you don't even try to meet your own needs, then there's no success and there's no failure and there's just nothing. There's stagnant energy, which creates a frustration, a sense of inner unsettledness and this need to run away from yourself when really you're on a hamster wheel, he's showing me. You're running away from yourself, but you're not going anywhere. You're exhausting yourself. You're exhausting your resources. You're exhausting your abilities. You're wasting your energy and your time. So many, 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 many people, he says, who are addicted or utilize substances, whether you do it high functioning and you do it casually every three months or, or every now and then, but you use it with this experience of cycling with it. He's showing me cycling or patterning with it. He says, um, it's an intentional sabotaging, a cycling of all of the things that you want to forget about, like um, judgments of um, evaluations, critiques that maybe a, a third grade teacher gave you or a parent never gave you, or there's a lot of, um, a lot of this um, sadness, and he literally says feeling sorry for oneself inside that's not intended as a judgment, that's intended as a descriptor of what the feeling is, he's saying. Not a judgment, feeling sorry for yourself. It's not a judgment, it's a descriptor of exactly what the sadness is. And he says, for you, the person who's outside of the cycle of what the addiction is and seeing the cycles, you experience the sadness. And when you reflect that toward that person, the self-pity part of it is about understanding this feeling of shame that they put, they, they will instantly put up the shield of shame that then they feel bad inside this place that's common and familiar to them. So it's not new badness, it's old badness, um, comforted badness or comforted shame. Shield of shame, comforted badness. So that there's not new pain that's happening. There's an expectation that there's always pain there. And so therefore the shame is something that shields them and protects them and gives them this quiet little space to shoot up their drugs or take more pills or um, binge drink until they vomit all over themselves. So he says, I know that's really very graphic. However, it's just very much the truth. And you see it as the person outside. So now you understand what's happening inside, he says. So, and you can't save anyone, right? Like, I feel like that. You can't save somebody. They have to choose that themselves. They have to choose to live, right? He says, um, the power of choice is, is, a, is a very important piece, yes. And, no, oh, that's interesting. He literally just said there's too much emphasis put on that. So what do you mean then? In the minutes, he said in the minutes, you can change your mind like that. You can change your course of action. You can change your fate, your destiny in a matter of minutes, he says. And, it, and thus affect the course of your life. Yes, he says. Oh my God. He just leaned toward me and touched my lap and kind of said to me, you can only do the best you can do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching people that are struggling with addiction, so much love to you right now because it takes a special kind of love. Talk about unconditional. He says, ah, ha, ha. unconditional. He says, um, kind of like superhero like, and it, it kind of does feel a little conditional. Let me just tell you, because it feels like do or die. Doesn't it? You guys. Mm-hmm. Feels like do or die. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what kind of state that person's going to be in when they answer the phone or when they call you or where they're at or if they're safe. It's just, just a freaking... It's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm just starting. 
I feel you, family and friends who are dealing with this. I feel you. And if you're a person that is dealing with addiction or struggling with substance abuse, get help. Go online. There are 1-800 hotlines. Strangers can talk to you about this. And if you're in massive denial and if you're constantly saying how much you don't have a problem, then the truth is you got a problem. <laughs> you do. And guess what? We're humans. Everybody has problems. Everybody has problems. Everybody has challenges. You don't need to be ashamed of yourself. Find that little piece inside you that actually loves yourself and make a phone call to a crisis hotline or go online and do a chat. Go on Facebook, find some friends, find a group, find somebody that can maybe help you. Reach out to your friends. Even if you've burned through your friends and treated them badly, manipulated them, and, and maybe were, um, you were a total jerk to them, if you call them up and tell them you need some help or you need to talk, I'm betting they would be there for you. Mm -hmm. I'm betting they would. Somebody would. That's sure. Whew, you guys. This is very tiring. I feel tired, you know? I don't feel like giving up at all. I just feel tired, like emotionally. From the worry, I think, is how it feels. Do you have any advice about that? He says, ah, yes. Do your self-care, do your, use your rituals, use your, he's showing me all my practices like yoga, meditation. Yes, do that, you guys, do that. We do that, we take care of ourselves, that's what we do. So that then we can be ready for when they need us and when they're ready for us. Because sometimes people who have addictions, a lot of times, they don't wanna hear what you have to say. They just want to complain about the story of why they have an addiction, not dealing with the addiction themselves, real, not realizing that the addiction is what's fueling additional, it's adding gasoline to the other little fires they have in their lives, whether it be work or a relationship or other health issues or school or what, whatever, money, whatever it is, right? It's adding fuel to those things. It's making them worse. And they focus on the things and not what they can do, which is deal with themselves and their addiction so that then they can have healthy patterns of behaviors. You know, and it takes time for that and it takes a lot of work and it takes a desire to want that and they have to want it. They, they have to want it for themselves. We can't want it and we can't want it for them. They have to want it for themselves, right? Yeah. And I'm going to give people advice who are um, supporting loved ones through this process. I am going to give you just a little bit of, I, again, I just started this journey. It's only been maybe, what, like a week or two. It hasn't been very long. It's been very recent. And no matter what they say to you about not wanting you there, not wanting, you know, they might be mean to you even, trying to get you to stay away from them or to back off. Don't back off. Don't back down. Mm -mm. Hold them to a higher standard spiritually. See their higher self and hold that vision of their healthy body, their healthy mental health, their mental health, their, their emotional health, their spiritual health. Hold that higher vision of them and talk to their higher self and tell their higher self how much you love them and support them energetically and amplify the good and wrap them with light and bring Archangel Michael in to support them. He's really good with addictions, I've discovered. Him and I think um, Ural and Ariel and Gabriel. So Michael, Ural, Ariel and Gabriel for me, what I've noticed have been very, very strong to support depending upon what that person is really wrestling with at the moment. But they're going to get into story and they're going to talk all about how this and that and they're going to kind of try to redirect outward and stuff and the truth is is their power is with them and their choices and what they want and we can't love them enough to make them healthy we can't we can just consistently persistently be stubbornly strong willingly be there 
and it only takes one once for them to say yes for it to stick and a hundred times for them to say yes and it not to stick <laughs> so and you never know when that one time is going to be where it's going to stick you know and they stay sober and healthy for three weeks three days three weeks three months three years 30 years whatever it is it's just you never really know how long it's going to last and you just have to really appreciate the state that they're in when they're healthy and when they're not healthy you just have to hold that higher vision for them and not take it too personally if they try to push you away or tell you mean things or whatever because they don't mean it that's not them talking it's the alcohol or the drugs or the addiction or whatever it is okay take really good care of yourself is what my advice is because it's tiring it's tiring and we got to be healthy for us so that our love is what leads and can be a shelter for them you know can be a little umbrella we're just a little love umbrella for them you know sometimes it's a hard ass love umbrella like yeah okay you can come under my umbrella but i'm not going to listen to you talk crap about your crappity crap crap you know I, be accountable okay be accountable change your behavior all right, so this is Bridget. I've been talking to Robin Williams about addiction. I hope it's helped you if you are an addiction, an addict yourself. There's lots of AA programs. There's counselors. There's mental health counselors. There's chemical dependency counselors. There's people you can talk to on the back of your insurance card. There's numbers that you can call. On, online, you can Google it up. There's lots of free resources as well. All right, this is Bridget. I hope I've inspired your spirit a little bit, encouraged you, those of us who are supporting people through this process and this journey, even though they aren't even supporting themselves sometimes, that's hard, right? We're doing the best we can, you guys, together. Together, we have hope. Pinky promise, you and I, come on. We got hope here, don't we? Don't give up. Don't give up. I'm not giving up. Don't give up. This is your life after all, and you get to live it. God, live it by example. Just live it. Thanks for being here.